Good morning, everybody. It was lovely to see uh, Year 10 back this week and to see students back in classrooms speaking live with teachers, live lessons that are genuinely live um, and seeing our community sort of spring back to looking a little bit like the school I used to know. We're looking forward to having all of Year 12 back in the next two weeks. And for September, I cannot tell you how excited I am by the recommendations that we should be able to be in a position where everyone is back in school together. We know, and you'll know from year 10, if you came into school, how much organisation went into making sure that you were safe and that teachers were safe last week, and how we had to set up things in order for you to follow the two metre guidance. And it's going to be tricky back in an environment when you've always behaved in one way and you feel you're somewhere familiar, but the rules and the expectations have really changed. It's human instinct for us to want to hug our friends that we haven't seen for a long time. We've been used to, if we've got a, a something that we want to share and have a quiet conversation with someone, we've been used to leaning nearer to them or whispering. We are, over years of learning and of imitation, a polite and courteous group of people, opening doors for one another, picking up something if someone drops it and handing it back to them. That's good, polite, learned behaviour. The staff actually meeting brand new colleagues this week on inset day. The natural instinct was to put out a hand and shake hands with them because many of these people, we've, uh, well, I've interviewed them on a screen, so I've not really met. So I found myself stepping into this, into, into the old world and using the old manners. Um, I, I reached out my hand and then had to remember to retract it part of the way through. Um, and equally, I found myself, you know, when I see people that I know well, opening my arms to embrace them if I've not seen them for a long time and then sort of moving around awkwardly and turning it into a, a little namaste bow. Some of our old courtesies, too, are just being reinforced. The art of queuing in an orderly way is associated for some reason with British politeness, or, although I've seen it in different cultures around the world. But wherever it came from, it's found its place again. Now, as an, as an international must, we need to be respectful. We need to not encroach on other space. We need to not push and shove, but be in an orderly queue. We're learning new courtesies, new etiquette. Wearing a mask, if we're likely to be less than two metres away from someone or in a busy street. Sidestepping on the pavement to let someone pass at two metres distance is not being rude, but being thoughtful. Picking up your own litter if we drop it to make sure that no one else has to pick it up and therefore risk touching it or picking up our germs. Carrying a handkerchief to sneeze in or to cough in. And entering into that bizarre social dance that we, 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 we've started doing, um, I find it particularly the case in corridors at school where you're having a conversation with someone and then someone else passes down the corridor and you have to step into a, into a doorway and then they step into another doorway and we all work out our sort of game of chess to allow us ourselves to pass each other without encroaching on each other's personal space. These are new courtesies. But these new courtesies will soon become our instincts because the new social etiquette is what we're going to need to keep us safe moving forward. Year 10 proved it was possible last week to adapt and to adjust and to find new ways of behaving in a busy school environment. In September, you'll all be back. There'll be many more people to manoeuvre around. So during this summer and during this continued period studying at home, perhaps you can start practising that. Remember, it's no longer impolite to reverse if someone comes near to your space. That's now polite behaviour and looking after their well-being. But let's finish on something uplifting. There have been many stories through this lockdown period of people who've been kind to one another and of people who've shown resilience and people in adversity looking across at others and thinking, what else can I do for those who may be having an even tougher time than me? This too has become a new and reinforced courtesy that is ca characterising our society and one that I think we should all embrace. It was really lovely to see Kian Hamid in Year 11 in the newspaper this week, um, working for the One Can Trust, making sure that food is getting to families who really need it. And to hear about so many of you and the money you've raised for the NHS and for other charities, and those of you that have been helping neighbours and relatives, going out and doing shopping for them, 
All that is new courtesy or reinforcing old courtesies and reminding us how important they are. And the story that has stood out for me in recent weeks is that of five-year-old little Tony Hudgel. He endured unspeakable abuse as a baby to the extent that he had to have both his legs amputated. At the age of five, he embodies courage, kindness and responsibility. Those deeper courtesies that go way beyond our outward manners. On his new prosthetic legs, he's managed to raise over a million pounds for the children's hospital that saved his life and gave him the opportunity to walk again. Watching him improve from those initial shaky steps to powering along on his two crutches and his new legs to complete a 10k walk and raise money that will make a difference to many others is an example to all of us that if we want to emerge as a stronger society from this crisis, these are the values that really matter. That's something for us all to think about this morning and going into next week. Have a lovely week, everybody. So I leave you not with a hymn this morning, but in the year of, of Beethoven's 250th anniversary, I leave you with the Ode to Joy from his Ninth Symphony, or a gospel version of it sung by our gospel choir. Joyful, joyful, love.